Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to South Granville Congregational Church. I'm so glad you're here to worship with us on uh, this wet Sunday. Um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, today's Halloween, so it was a dark and stormy morning. <laughs> right? Well, uh, uh, just a few announcements and then we'll get started. Uh, first of all, um, Alice did hear um, one the hospital uh, Friday. Uh, did she not go? Uh, did she go to the doctor? Okay. Uh, so is, is she okay? Okay. So, because I haven't gotten any word, so I, I, the last thing I need was going to the hospital on Friday. So, okay, I take that back. She did not go to the hospital. Um, and so I assume we're having Bible study at her house. Uh, we were, were working on alternate plans just in case, but uh, she does love having us there. Uh, we help keep her going, she says, so <laughs> uh, it's good, good to do that. Um, don't forget next Sunday is Daylight Savings, so if you don't set your clock back, you'll be early to church and oh the horror, right? <laughs> Um, so make sure you set your thoughts back uh, Saturday night for those of you who still have the old fashioned kind and actually have to do that. Um, and uh, also, uh, we do have Wi Fi in the church now. Um, we have a temporary router. Uh, I ordered a new one, it'll be here this coming week. Once I have that installed and have the, have the actual network that we're going to use set up and the password, I will give that to you. Um, that also means you'll have to sign with your cell phones <laughs> for church. But um, one of, there are several features that uh, come with that that I can do here. Uh, we can stream for one thing. Uh, so we'll have live services streaming over the internet, which is uh, great for those who cannot be with us live. Um, also, if you download, for those of you who are tech savvy, that's probably not everybody, but those of you who are tech savvy, you can download the Faith Life app, and during the service, um, as the slides go, it will send signals to your phone, and you can actually see scripture. Um, that anything that I embed in the service that I want you to have on your device, um, it will send that to you as well. Um, so if you have trouble seeing the screen, you can actually have it right on your right in your hand and see that. Um, and then there's other things as well, but. Um, just know that that is coming as well. And um, of course, uh, any any of the kids that are going out to get some candy tonight, we just hope that you're safe. We will be praying for you on that front. Uh, any other praise or prayer requests today? All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
to worship this morning is number 85. Number 85, name above every name. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Would you stand and join me if you're able as we sing hymn number 433. And number 433, rise up for the church of God.
responsive reading this morning is number seven. Number seven, praise the Almighty King. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. We give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. We give you thanks and praise your glorious name. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. You stand and join me if you're able as we recite the acclamation of faith, which is found in the back of your hand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, death, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you.
found in your bosom. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25 to 27. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, that's pages 1346 to 1347 in your new Bibles. <coughs> Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. The word of the Lord. Amen. Now receive your morning tithes and offerings. Extend your love to us, your church here on earth. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Come out of the Lord of birth. Loving Heavenly Father, this morning we lift your name on high like a blanket of praise. We rejoice in your great love and mercy and grace. Thank you that in this fallen world you have made a way, a path to redemption. 
Your grace flows endlessly to us each day, and so we celebrate the great love that you have for us. Thank you that we can breathe in resurrection life. Thank you that we are fully redeemed and restored. We surrender our lives to you in worship and praise this morning and invite your beautiful Holy Spirit to move freely among us, to dwell within us, to equip and challenge and comfort and teach us, to inspire us as we learn more about your majestic ways, ways that are so vastly different from ours that they are difficult to understand. We thank you for those who are able to be with us this morning, and we pray for those who cannot be. We also pray for those who may someday walk through those doors seeking you. It's good to be able to come into your house and put aside the cares of life, to cast aside our anxieties, and to turn them over to you. But Father, there are some among us today, and many who are not, that have special needs in their lives. They need your special touch and reassurances right now. Some have physical needs, and we don't understand why these things come into our lives, and sometimes they even cause a crisis of our faith. They push us to our limits, but Father, we pray this morning that their faith will not fail, that they will do everything they can do and give the rest over to you, knowing that no matter what happens, your grace is sufficient. There are some we lift up before you today who are struggling with family and relationship problems. Some face immense stress in their daily lives, and anxiety is a great burden for them. They need your special grace to see them through, and so we ask that you would give them peace, healing, and reconciliation. And Father, some are struggling financially, and as prices are soaring, they are facing even more difficult times. Your word says that you know our needs and that we shouldn't worry about them, that you will provide. And so we ask you to fulfill your promise and help them make ends meet. Put food on their tables, help them find employment as it gets colder, keep them warm. Father, you are the maker and provider of all things, and so we thank you for all you do for us. Sovereign God, we continue to pray for this nation that we so dearly love and that you have so graciously given to us. We pray that our leaders and those in authority over us would turn to you for guidance and wisdom so that they may serve us better and more effectively. Show them how to lead us in a way that aligns with your word. Touch their hearts and their minds, Lord. And above all else, may your will be done in this nation and not the will of those who seek only power and glory for themselves. They may have plans, but only your plans will stand forever. We give thanks and we honor you. We are, apart from you, we are nothing, Lord. Father, we pray for those children who will be out tonight engaging in fall activities, and we ask you to keep your hand upon them and keep them safe. As we continue our worship this morning, may everything we say and can do be pleasing in your sight. We pray this in all our prayers in the matchless name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, I have a good marriage. Actually, I have a great marriage. And I like to think that I'm at the very least a good husband, provider, defender, leader of my family and household. Uh, with the recent passing of my dad, they made me think about whether my kids thought of me as a good father. And I talked with them about it, and they said I was. Uh, hopefully, to those I'm not you know, married to or who are my children, I'm considered a good friend, a guy who's honest and has integrity, who you can count on. We have a great church, don't we? And, and I hope I've been a good pastor and leader over the past four years. I mean, at the very least, a couple of you think that. I mean, that's what Linda told me last week for pastor appreciation. You didn't lie, did you? That not in church, that would be bad, right? Uh, this past uh, week at ACE, I reached my 90 days, and so they did my 90-day evaluation, and uh, that's where they decide whether they're going to keep me or not. I go from seasonal or temporary to permanent, and uh, I'm happy to report they said I was a good employee, and they said I'm doing a great job. Good. Great. Those are all wonderful things. But do you know what they're not? Perfect. They're not perfect. I don't have a perfect marriage. I'm not a perfect father or husband or friend or leader or pastor or employee. See, perfect is a concept that's thrown around a lot. If I only had my, and you fill in the blank, if it was perfect, then I'd be happy. If I had this car or this house or went on this vacation, that would be perfect, and I would be happy. If I had this much money in my bank account, if I could only get to the perfect weight, I would feel so much better. If I had the perfect marriage, the perfect spouse, the perfect children, I could only find a perfect church, then I'd be happy. That's how we think, isn't it? Well, loved ones, perfect is an illusion. Even though it's something we aim for. But trying to be perfect is a never-ending game. And it's one you'll never win. But what if I told you there's a better way? What if we decided to lay down the fight for perfect and choose a better way? What if we had a different mindset? What if we decided to aim for better? To be a better spouse, a better friend, a better father, a better man, a better woman, a better leader, a better employee. When it comes to our personal lives, the antithesis of better is perfect. But this drive toward perfection leads to flat out exhaustion. You want to know why? Because apart from God, perfect doesn't exist. And expecting perfection from yourself or others is a recipe for a very difficult life. Unlike perfect, better is attainable. As much as we train or work or try or gut it out, we'll never be perfect at anything, but we can most certainly be better. Better can move us forward in our relationships, in our lives, and in our careers. I'll never be a perfect guitar player, but I can certainly be a better guitar player. And if I can become a better guitar player, then our 11 a.m. worship team will be better. And if our 11 a.m. worship team is better, then our 11 a.m. church experience would be better. The same goes for my preaching, for me being a husband and a father, a friend, an employee. Truett Cathy, the founder of Chick-fil-A, I love me some Chick-fil-A. Uh, Truett Cathy said this, he said, I'm not interested in getting bigger, I'm interested in getting better. If we get better, Customers will demand we get bigger. See, better is such an underappreciated concept. And the world is full of stories about businesses 
and churches that sacrifice better for bigger to the point where eventually they become smaller or some even go extinct. So I want to suggest a different mindset this morning. And as we pursue this different mindset, we'll quickly discover a powerful truth that better is greater than perfect. Better is greater than perfect. It all comes down to one overarching challenge that Jesus gave us and a corresponding question. And the challenge I'm talking about that Jesus gave us is found in both Matthew and Luke. And it's in a Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus was talking about worry and anxiety. You know, what will I eat? And what will I wear? And he says this profound statement. But it's not just a statement. It's a, it's a challenge. It, it's a directive. It's found in Matthew 6, 33. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So the first question is, well, how do we seek the kingdom of God? And that's the easy part, because the truth of it is, the kingdom of God actually seeks us. See, Peter tells us, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Here's the best part. It's free. It's a gift. It's not something you can earn. You are invited and welcomed into the kingdom of God through the grace of God by His Son Jesus, the Son of God. The Son of God who gave His life for each and every one of you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That same Jesus, the Son of God who sacrificed Himself on a cross for every sin you've ever committed or ever will commit. He says this in Revelation 3, 20 to 21. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Seeking the kingdom of God is as easy as opening the door and entering into a relationship with the living God. By repenting or turning away from your sins and asking for his forgiveness, which he freely gives. And this grace is not a once occurrence. We can't and just and I shouldn't just say, okay, I'm forgiven, and then just go on with our lives and forget about it. In our Thursday Bible study, we've been studying the book of Ephesians. And we looked at how Paul was just so amazed that God would choose him to represent uh, him, to represent God to the Gentiles. That God would forgive him this Pharisee, this persecutor, a killer of Christians. And Paul's life reflected that every day. <clears throat> the grace of God should take root in our lives so that each and every day, in every aspect of our lives, we are better today than we were yesterday. We're better this month than we were last month. We're better this year than we were last year. And with this mindset, it's not so much of a performance thing, because what aren't we? We're not perfect, right? We're gonna spit and sputter and make mistakes. But what we are going to do over time is get better, right? And performance ultimately comes with maturity. And I'm not talking about age maturity. I'm talking about maturity in your walk with God. 
becoming mature Christians. Just like a baby first learning to walk, they'll stumble and they'll fall. And we shouldn't expect anything less as Christians. We shouldn't expect anything less from believers in Christ who are either new believers or who haven't have been rooted in solid teaching of the Word of God. They haven't uh, had the Word of God engraved on their heart. When you have the Word of God engraved in your heart and in your soul and in your mind and all of your being, you face challenges and experiences. Sometimes you'll fall, you'll fail. But as John Maxwell says, we need to fail forward, right? We need to learn from our experiences and do better next time. So for the remainder of my time this morning, I, I want to give you an example of making it better. And I'm going to use the illustration of marriage. Um, because first, many of you are married. But second, marriage is uh, an illustration or a picture that Jesus used when it comes to our relationship with him as the church, the body of Christ. And so Paul writes this in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. He says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Now all the men, they like to point to the part just before that that says, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Now, if my wife would just do that, we'd have the perfect marriage, right? And of course, all the feminists like to point to that as well and say, well, this is all a bunch of chauvinistic, patriarchal malarkey, right? Wives, you know, women, aren't your slaves. And to that point, they are right. They're not. Okay, But they always seem to skip over our scripture reading today. That second part, all of that, verses 22, really, to 33, they all go together. Remember, we don't just read a Bible verse. Now, this coming Friday, I have the privilege of officiating uh, my baby brother's wedding. Uh, Billy, with my uh, new beautiful sister-in-law to me, Crystal. And during premarital counseling, I told them that marriage is a 50-50. Divorces. And according to God's word, marriage is 100 100. If you want an okay marriage, if you want a good marriage, you know, honestly, if it's going to be stacked against you. Go ahead and do 50 50. But if you want a better marriage, then root your marriage in the word of God and make it 100 100. Give your all for your stuff. It's not easy. I fail. I fall. But I try to learn from my mistakes. And so next time, I'll do it better. If I love Anna like Christ loved the church, if I treat her like a spotless bride that should be holy, and don't be afraid of that word holy, uh, at its root, the, the word holy, hagios, means set apart. It means special. It means one who was chosen only for you. It means perfect when it comes to God. But even though our spouse isn't perfect, we need to love them like they are. And if you do that each and every day, day after day, month after month, year after year, you'll have a better marriage. And if you're not married, you can apply that to the rest of your life, to some other category. Well, how is that? Well, the Ephesians passage continues. Verse 28 says, So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. 
Doesn't that sound kind of familiar, like something else that Jesus might have said, that God might have said? He love your wife as your own body. What's the second commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself, right? Who's your neighbor? Everybody. Everybody. So as you leave here today, ask yourself, what areas of my life do I want to do better? Make a list and then seek God by praying about it. And look into his word and see what it says about that area of your life. My prayer, well, initially it was, Dear Lord, please give on a better husband today. In Jesus' name, Amen. But that, then I thought about it, and I, 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 I don't want him to like literally replace me with another better husband. So I, I changed it to uh, my prayer today is, Dear Lord, please make me a better husband for Allah today. In Jesus' name, Amen. What's your prayer? Would you stand and join us if you're able as we sing hymn number 434? Hymn number 434, Revive Us Again.